We're now ready to turn our attention to using MOSFETs to provide amplification. As we've seen, in the saturation region, the current through the transistor is proportional to VGS squared. We can think of this in terms of a voltage-controlled current, or a current that's dependent upon a voltage. But a more commonly useful amplifier is a voltage-controlled voltage source. We can convert the current to a voltage by, rep by placing R sub D into the drain part, or connected to the drain of the amplifier circuit, as shown here, and taking, v and taking VDS to be the output voltage. Thus, V out, the voltage here at the drain, is equal to VDD minus I sub D times R sub D, or V out then is given by this equation here. If we substitute in here I sub D with this expression here, we get then V out as a function of VDD, the power supply voltage, and this expression here. Note the form of the expression here in the saturation region is proportional to VGS squared, as we've said. And this expression here corresponds to a parabola in the saturation region. It's upside down, or it's concave down, given the minus sign there. It's shifted to the right by VT volts. So the center, or the axis of symmetry, is the voltage V sub T, opening downward parabola. For values of VGS less than the threshold voltage, the transistor is in the cutoff region. And for values of VGS corresponding to this point B, where VGS, or where VDS is less than VGS minus VT, the, di or the transistor is in the triode region. This curve here that relates the output voltage VDS to the input voltage VGS is known as the voltage transfer characteristic. As you can see here in the graph, even though it's quadratic, there's a portion of the curve that is relatively linear centered around this bias point Q. Our objective will be to bias the transistor at a DC point Q with a DC value of VGS and a corresponding VDS and superimpose a relatively small time varying signal on top of the DC bias by keeping the variations of VGS small, therefore varying about this DC quantity here, by keeping that, those variations relatively small, the output VDS will be a relatively linearly scaled version of the input. The points marked A and B correspond to the edges of the saturation region. As I've already mentioned, for values of VGS less than the threshold voltage, the transistor is in cutoff. And for values greater than this point here, the transistor is in the triode region. And our amplification then takes place within the saturation region. By setting our expression here, this equal to VGS minus VT, the value of VGS, or the, I'm sorry, the value of VDS, where um, when VDS equals VGS minus VT, we're at the border of the transition, or the border between the saturation and the triode regions. And then solving this expression for VGS, you'll note that it's a quadratic, which can then be used, or we can then use the quadratic formula to solve for VGS at the point B. So the value of VGS at the interface or the border between the saturation and the triode region then is given by this expression there. So the bias point Q then is located some point between the triode, or the, I'm sorry, the uh, cutoff region and the triode region. And generally speaking, it'll be located somewhere in the midpoint so that there's plenty of headroom and foot room for variations in this VGS voltage, which will then correspond to variations in the output voltage. This quiescent or resting state 
this bias point, or at that point, VGS, capital V, capital GS, and capital V, capital DS, the DC values, are also related to each other by the saturation current voltage relationship that we've seen before. Only here, we've got the DC voltage and the corresponding DC voltage there. Superimposed on this, or as the superposition sum of this DC value, we then add our time varying signal, the signal to be amplified. And it can be bottled as the superposition or the sum of those two voltages. Thus, VGS will equal VGS plus VGS. The total variation in voltage at the gate will equal the DC bias plus the time varying or small signal. Graphically, it looks like this. Small variations around the bias um, value for VGS corresponding to this then manifest themselves at the output as amplified versions of that time variation. And just as the input was centered around VG, capital V, capital GS, the DC or bias gate voltage, the output value or the output variations are centered around the bias value VDS.